The world is my oyster. <laughs> Frankie goes to Hollywood. Underrated as fuck for my generation. Get into that shit. Actually, where are the remixes to Frankie Goes to Hollywood? Like, there's all sorts of, like, techno remixes, or they were techno remixes. Now they're just, like, covers that are remixes. I want more Frankie. Anyway, we're here with the Aoun X8 Magic deck. Well, this... you This was a huge deal, like, when this came out three years ago. Because this was the first DAC that actually sounded different. Before there was the R2R... Uh, Denifrips Aries 2 that does, oh my god, it's $800 and it's doing, it actually sounds different. This was the DAC you got when you wanted your DAC to be different. And the reason was, if I pull this up here, I've I recently added the, uh, the, the, I like the black and white stickers and the silver stuff. Here's the reason. In fact, I'm going to yank this cover off because I couldn't get the screws back in because there's a burst and op amp in here. Um, op amps are the operational amplifiers. So a DAC which takes your digital inputs, coaxial, optical, USB, still has to amplify the signal to become RCA. It still has to be done. That's what a DAC does. It takes digital ones and zeros and it plots it, but then it does this and it has to make that an analog signal that a bigger amp, in this case, the LA90, um, which is a speaker amp, but I'm hooked up to the T6, whatever. That's what it has to do. It has to make the waveform analog digital to analog converter, but then it also has to amplify that to a very small voltage, two and a quarter volts, I think is RCA. Uh, XLR for uh, balance is four volts, um, but there's an amplifier involved. That's why tube DACs can exist. I don't have a tube DAC. I know Tor, the um, this company here, which is Ukrainian based. I know they make a tube DAC. And basically, that, all that will do is the process of taking it from the DAC chip, whether it's an ESS or a Sabre or AKM, it still has to come out and get bigger, just a little bit bigger, with like a topping LA90 or any headphone amp, where it's a lot bigger, but you still have to get it like up enough to travel through wires. So what happens with the own X8 Magic DAC, and this is not one I'm reviewing, this is the old one, this is the three-year-old one, that's the one we're reviewing with a, a Prince Eugene on it. Um, is the amplifier section in this is able to be modified with an op amp. And the op amp is literally just the instruction set thing. Here's what a normal one looks like. That burst one's fat as a fucking house. It, it comes with this. By the way, this is what the X18 comes with. It comes with tools and tools and a pill case. So apparently Wednesday, which just happens to be today, by the way, you get that. There's your there's your, your op amp for Wednesday. I guess if you're actually a psychopath, you could fill this up and have a different op amp for every day of the week, including X day. But here's what it looks like. This little baby chip right here, this is a microchip. It's a chip, right? Well, actually, maybe it's not a microchip, but it's a chip. This is an a BB OPA 2134PA um, 11A 9R... QM or ROM? This is actually the second uh, op amp that comes with the X18. The X18 comes with one installed. It also <laughs> comes with that one. And back in the day when I did this, I had a set of Burson op amps. And the Burson op amps, which I can just remove it by hand because it's fucking massive, is a chonky boy. It's a chonky boy. And it doesn't allow the panel on the bottom, which is the same as that that has, to be reinstalled properly. So I had to literally just take a wad of, of gray tack and then just squeeze, squeeze that panel on there. In fact, I'm very sure I don't know where the screws are for this anymore. But um, times have changed. It's been three years since this. I think it's been three years, roughly three years. And as far as DACs go that sound different, this is still certainly one that I would look at, but it's been three years. DACs have gone through so many changes, like as far as the AKM factory burned to the ground and now they're just starting to get back to their high-end stuff. Uh, Sabre took over. There was a lot of dual mono Sabre DACs that hit the market because they were the only ones around. They were the only game in town. In fact, what's in this? Hold on, let me just check. Do, 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 do you even say? What's in the box? Coming soon. Uh, Lin Sol sent this to me. Zios. Uh, price point on this is $300. So, to, to quote uh, from Chernobyl, not great, but not the worst. $300 for a DAC 
seems like maybe a little bit high, but we're going to get to it. We're going to get to why. Actually, this may this uses FPGA. This may not even use This may not even use like a standard DAC chip. Now that I'm thinking about it, is it is it a higher is it pro, pro it's a pre, Oh, it okay, so I'm just double checking because I don't want to be wrong. I could be wrong. Here's the thing. I'm Zeos. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comments. Let other people find the comment that says I'm wrong and everyone know I'm wrong. If I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong. FPGA is a different way of doing a DAC on top of like the ESS and the Sabre ones. It's you actually, they actually program it themselves. Let me move this to the center of the Grovemade stand. Link to the Grovemade stand. I want, th these are beautiful. And I love the fact that the uh, LA90 fits underneath. FPGA is basically like how do I put this in terms that people will grasp, but it's going to be completely wrong. It's If you don't want to buy the AKM, you don't want to buy the ESS, you want to just program an Arduino board to be your DAC, that's what FPGA essentially is. It's their own made-up thing that says, okay, we could do this without you know a DAC chip that's a name brand. And it's doing a fantastic fucking job. And then they can use the little op-amp changer to change the functionality. I'm going to lose that. It's so small. To change the functionality of the amplification that takes it from whatever volt, micro volts coming out of the FPGA up to the actual usable line voltage. Now, what's the difference, Zeos, between the old school one here, which I really do like it in silver more than black, but I digress. Um, this doesn't have the ability to do Bluetooth. This one doesn't either. But if you go to the Linsol page, for $300, you can get this non-Bluetooth version, or for $300, you can get the Bluetooth version, which has an antenna. Just saying that's literally, I, there's no price difference. The big difference is that the FPGA core that's doing the decoding is three years newer, so better programming more more time that they just kept going, and, and I can't flip, I'm walk around the desk. I'm walking around the desk. I don't do it. A it's just I used real short cables. Hi, fucking mess. You're not supposed to see this. This is not for you. Anyway, it has TRS balanced, and I'm using these uh, actually APOS cables. APOS sent me the topping DAC that's like eight channels, and they're like, here's four of these really really nice uh, TRS jumpers. So these are balanced connections. A lot of things are going to the smaller form factor to sort of fit more things. And sure enough, this is too. So I can plug that directly into the LA90 and then right here. So now we get balanced output. That is, we gotta get to the actual crux of the situation and why this DAC is an actual DAC you should probably think about spending money on. Because unlike just a DAC, like the Denifrips Aries, where it's signal in, signal out, done, you got a volume knob in the front, but other things too. Um, so here's USB. Here's a little plug over where the antenna thing would be. Uh, since 2004, and apparently that's 18th year of anniversary. Here's my coaxial input that I'm feeding off the Singzer SU6 uh, digital to digital converter. Here's a set of world's best cables going to these Abram Tech speakers, which you're hearing uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood on. So that's this this set of RCAs is line out. That means that these speakers, no matter what the volume knob in the front is doing, are getting full range. You're using the DAC, you're using the FPGA, you're using the DOP amp, and it's making these speakers go. These other two are pre-outs, which means the volume knob in front affects them. So the balance set is going down to the LA90. And the other set is sitting on my desk because, frankly, I couldn't figure out if I wanted to grab another headphone amp to do that with. Basically, you have the option with the old with the old X8 Magic DAC, you had one of each. You had audio out and preamp out. So this one was constant. So you'd put this to something else that has a remote control, AKA this, AKA those speakers. And then you had a preamp out that you could control the volume on. Now, uh, I picked the LA90, because the LA90 has that switch in the back that lets you disable the main volume control in the front. This volume control doesn't affect it right now. If you had a power amp, you had a crown amp or something, or you're using these as a mono blocks, which I do have two of them now, so I get to mono block them for speakers. You could use this to control the output voltage on both of them. And then you get another set of RCA outs that you could do the same thing, but not balanced. 
So you're looking at this and you're getting a full line out. It's one of the only DACs that does this, that gives you a full line out. Here's the DAC, here's the information unaffected, unmolested. Then you get not one, but two other outputs that are variable. And it's got a very nice knob. It's got a very clean pot. And I can tell you that because I'm feeding this into these. And oh, just a little point out, I just spent the last week jerking off about the A90D discrete. And then I plugged these back into the LA90, which is a speaker amp. And I think these, just these, just these might still have an edge on the LA90. Just a, just a, just a sm small, super small edge. You mute, mute those speakers. Oh! Yeah. Frankie, oh my God. So now, this thing is running full tilt or full tits, however you want to go about it. And now this is my volume control for it. And you get one button on the front. Here's the tour of the unit. You saw the back. It's 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 just it's ins and outs and then variable outs. You get the front, you got one button. It's called input, which is there's no off. You know that I'm thinking about. There's a main power bus switch in the back, which you don't have to shut it off. Most DACs don't get hot. I don't, I don't think they use more than like five watts usually because they're just generating a small voltage. Um, the front has an input button and then it has a line that goes all the way across and goes to USB, optical, coaxial, A, B, C, D. And then you have min, max, and then here's a little placard that says XVIII for 18 year anniversary. And down here it says all the things it's doing. Oh, it does have ESS. It does have the ESS DAX. All right, I'm just, I'm being dumb. I'm being dumb. I've too much coffee today. Focus. Um, but yeah, it's the new ESS 9038Q2M, which is a nice new DAC. Uh, so I have to stop listening to music because I'm just going to start dancing and singing. And I only have half battery in this camera. And it should be a short thing. Because I fucking loved this for the reason that it sounded better than other DACs. Different. Just different. It just had to sound different. By default, with the stock op amp, oh god, I'm gonna lose. This. I'm still gonna lose this. By default, with the stock op amp, this does something to like the linear LA90 and those speakers. I had those speakers up for a couple of reviews now. That it's like, oh, there's a sweetness to it, even if it's artificial, even if it doesn't measure perfectly accurately. I'm I'm a huge proponent of get a piece of equipment that sounds good and still does its job. If it sounds wonky and it doesn't do its job right because of that wonkiness, don't buy it. But this is a DAC, it has a job. Turn anal digital into analog and give it to me. And it does that. And it does that good enough and clean enough that I'm like, okay. But then if you do a direct AB comparison, even on the stock op amp, this sounds warmer. This sounds wider. This is doing something to the sound and I don't hate it, and I'm not offended by it, and I kind of feel like I want it. Like I'm, like I might have to go. Mm, I just, mm, I'm gonna listen to other things, and it's like I kind of wish it sounded like the X8, Magic DAC, 18th, or, or if you really want to say it, it's X8 XV III, X8 XV III. Um, I'm gonna stop the video actually right now, and we're gonna swap to the other one that it came with real quick. Do like two minutes of listening with that. Oh, I'll do like five minutes listening with the camera off. Come back, tell you if that sounds, because I want to know why the, they gave us two. It doesn't say what they are, but I'm going to go back to my my babies with this. I should probably describe the front too real quick before I do that. But um, so you hit the button and it goes USB, optical, coaxial. That's all that button does, unless you hold it down. And then we go from the A is lit up to the B is lit up. So the C is lit up. If you hold it, it blinks and it's like D and then it's AB and then BC and then CD and then back to A because that is literally, wait, where's the paper? That's swapping between fast roll off linear phase, slow roll off linear phase, fast roll off minimum phase, slow roll off minimum phase, appetizing fast roll off linear phase filter, a hybrid fast roll off minimum phase filter and brick wall filter. So those are the filters that I literally, I usually can't hear still can't hear them all right anyone who could tell me the difference between these seven filters blind testing with whatever equipment you want whatever source you want let me know i want to know i want to know scientifically if anyone can actually hear the filter differences i can't but 
And then, yeah, a Bluetooth only edition will turn the coaxial one red when you're switching between inputs. So it'll be like one, two, three, and then three red becomes the Bluetooth uh, indicator. And there's apparently a manual, but you don't need it when you have this cool card, which I'm going to slide right. Come on, be cool. Be cool on camera. I'm utterly... F oh, there you go. Whee! So, I'm going to take this. I'm going to disconnect. Actually, how do I... Let me shut this off just before, before something goes pop. I'm going to disconnect it from... Oh, those, those wires are gone. I'm going to disco this. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to unscrew this. I'm going to change the op amp out and see if I could hear a difference in the stock op amp that it comes with. This is stock number one. This is stock number two. And then I'm probably going to steal the Burson one out of this. And we're going to see if I can make this sound even more different. Hmm, different. I should probably show you this first. These are very, very small screws. Like, do not lose them. Those are infinitesimally small. Came with a little Allen key to get them out. And then the door just falls off. And then you got this cool picker. Like it comes with this picker, it came with it, and then there's the instructions on look for the notch in the DAC, in the uh, in the op amp, and the notch in the unit, and get it out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just extract this. Oh yeah, come on. It's like that. Oh god, I bent it a little bit. It didn't come straight out. Yeah, let's try to be gentle with these things. So this one is a 5532 DD JRC B15 4A. So that's the one that was the stock stock. So now I'm going to put in this other one that's not the stock stock. And where's our notch? You motherfuckers, there's no notch in this one. I think it, this came out straight here with the, with the circle in the bottom left. So we're going to assume that's a circle in the bottom left. This one doesn't have a notch in it either. Oh, there you go. It's showing the dot. Dot or notch. So the dot has to be bottom left with the notch. So wait, that means the dot has to be... The dot and the notch have to be on the same side, so it has to go that way. So I'm gonna install this my manually. You don't use a tool for this. And it did have the pins bent a little bit just from being in there. So let's just line up the bottom four. And then we have to sort of like bend the top four down. I love doing this on camera where, you know, if I fuck up, everyone gets, oh fuck, I fucked it up. Oh yeah, oh I ruined it real bad. All right, I'm gonna fix this and get it working, hold on. All right. Got my, my nice, what are these? Nipbacks. I paid like $35 for these because they're made in Germany. Which is good because I put the German girl from uh, Azure Lane on there. So now I've got it in there. I had to straighten out the pin. One of the pins is a little thinner and I just didn't want it. You have to basically put it upside down to seat it. I didn't have it. I was trying to be ZS. Turn off and unplug before changing the op amp. Okay, we're done now. Um, so I'm going to leave the cover off because I'm going to be changing it again. I'm assuming if you're going to swap op amps, you're not even going to bother putting the cover back on. So let's plug back in our things and then I'll give the listen. And <laughs> Okay, so definitely don't like this one as much. Like I'm sitting here and I'm drinking coffee, which makes everything sound better. There's going to be a whole video on like drug use and music listening. I don't do drugs but coffee is a fucking drug and it, i can tell you that it makes my senses like Wah! um so swapping that op amp has taken away the the warmth it's much more linear now and that makes sense they would give you two if they give you two op amps here's your choice as a company all right we're going to send this out people are lazy and people are going to probably listen on the first op amp you give them. By the way, I use some of that gray tack to attach the little tool to this case. So it's gray tack's great for everything. Um, you have to pick. Do you want to put the fun, warm op amp in by default or the linear, clean one, which is what this one is? Much more linear. When they talk about the measurements here, I was looking at the thing, which, again, they don't mention the ESS in the page. It's on the box. Only on the fucking box. Um, they mention that it has, uh, where is it? 0.00027% total harmonic distortion plus noise. Now, distortion can be measured not just as, uh, like, errors, but as you put a, if you put a little bit of warmth on there, it's not going to be as, it's not going to measure as good. This is the one they measure on. I guarantee you this is the one they measure on. And the other one is, a more, is the way more fun one to listen to. So I'm listening to it, still sounds great. Still topping LA90 running it. It's great, it's great. But it's missing that spark of better 
than all the other things I plugged into the LA90 to, to source this. So now I'm going to stop again. And I actually, this is actually blue tacked with the blue tack. You can see it to the lid of this one. And uh, I should point out the Burson, like these pins won't bend. Burson makes these specific, I'll see if I can link Burson anywhere where you can buy them. Burson makes these specific, I think Bloom Audio has them, specifically to be plugged in and out. Unfortunately, they don't have any more of these short ones in stock when I was asking Bloom Audio. They only have like the ones that are that deep, which is gonna fuck you up real bad. So you're gonna have to get a Grove made stand and cut a hole with a drill so that your op amp can stick out the bottom like that far. But I'm gonna stop again, turn it off, unplug it this time, swap the thing in, and then I'm gonna give that a five minutes of listener, 10 minutes of listener, I don't know, two hours of listening, come back and then we'll decide if, uh, is it worth swapping to a Burson level op amp? Or just keep the stock one, because the stock one was fucking great. Moving on. Okay, so um, to the Burson, I don't like it as much on headphones, but anyone who says oh, old DAC sound the same now can use this system of changing op amps because it's wholly different. So we went, I, I put the, uh, the op amps back. I put the boring one or the linear one in the Monday because it's a case of the Mondays, put the party one, the stock one into Friday. And then um, I found this case, which is for the big Burson uh, Grand Tourer $2,500 uh, amp. That has swappable op amps. Um, but there are six of them and they're mono, so I can't try them in this. And they're all the same style. They're all the JRC. These are the one these are the B152As. The one that is the fun one is the B154A stereo. Um, but here's the thing. Warm, just warm, but very forward. Like things were women were shouting at me, which is normal. But women were shouting at me and like in my face with these headphones on the same amp with the same volume knob on the same tracks. So I'm like, ooh, you know what? I kind of like the stock one that this comes with better. Then I put speakers on because if you're changing the like the, the, the forwardness of things and then you integrate speakers into that mix, this op amp sounds better for speakers because it's literally giving you more of a center image, which on a headphone is like can be a little bit like, uh, but if you're backing it out to real like, like life to a real world scenario, there you go. So holy fuck, this is worse than tube rolling. Although you don't have to wait for it to warm up, which is nice. Tube rolling, you have to wait for it to warm up and cool down, and they'll get your fingerprints on it. Although these pins bend a hell of a lot easier. So yeah, no, I'm um, I'm definitely putting the stock one back in. Like it still sounds amazing with the Burson, but it's like it's like it's like mm, it might be a little bit brighter, and it's just more it's Italian hands. I was enjoying literally fucking everything with the stock op amp then everything was a little bit a little bit too flat with the second one and now the first one that i stole from the old one is a little bit like eh. come to think of it where is the second one i had two of these bursons so you could use them as stereo or in a monoblock configuration did i sell the unit because it was another own it was the port no it was an x-duo one of the x-duo portables had a swappable op amp and i pulled out the back and swapped it in there uh, all right, I'll have to worry about it later. Anyway, so yeah, so now, what a great test bench. Oh, I'm, this, LA90 is aggressive. So yeah, no, that's perfect example of, yes, DAX can sound different, but is it the chip? Is it the Sabre? Or is it the amplification part? Which is what, here's the thing. Once I start bringing this into the into the, the, the view of everyone, now it's like, well, then DAX and all sound different. It's possible, but in the same sort of price bracket, unless they're doing crazy FPGA things with swappable op amps, most of the amplification they're using is very, very linear. They try to be very linear. So you get much less difference between DAX. Those really, 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 really expensive $20,000 DAX, they're basically putting like huge fucking monster amps in it. Like, look, our amps are like, they're eighteen thousand of that twenty thousand dollars is the amplifier to try to make the little, the little chip to the bigger. It's just, mm, it's oh, ex excess. This is fun because they're actually playing with it. They're, they're they're letting you play with it. They're literally letting you yank shit out of it and shove new shit into the shit to make it sound different. So, 
Do I love the own X8 Magic deck? Yes. Do I think everyone needs it? I don't know if I would, if you're not using it, there's two people who are gonna buy this. One person is going to be someone who needs uh, preamp control. The fact that it's got a beautiful knob, it's not a digital, it's not a clicky, like A90D, if you have that, I'm gonna use that in a couple future videos, like real soon. And it's gonna have a much more accurate like balance. But if you're using it as a preamp to preamp an amp, or mono blocks, or something to do with speakers, absolutely you buy this. If you are someone who wants to play around with op amp swapping, which is like a whole other fucking, that's a whole other hobby. Don't come to me. Don't don't at me, bro. Just do, that's like tube rolling people. I can't, I leave them in their tube rolling world and op amp swapping people. I might actually be more inclined to do that. But I, again, there's only like one or two devices that do it like regularly. There's a big person. There's this, there's that. And there's a couple X dual portables that do it. So it's not like you could do it like a million, there's not a million tube amps. There's not a million op amp swappable things. So I might actually have four or five of them just to find what I like the best. So far, the stock one that came with this was the best. I'm going to put it back. And then I'm going to put this back in here. I guess I could put the linear one back in here and then put the bursting one in the shelf somewhere. But yeah, if you want to play with op amp swapping, this is the DAC for you. If you want to preamp something, this is the DAC for you because you get both. You get to preamp or line out which is again, a rare to have both simultaneously. No complaints about plugging everything in all at once. Um, and it's $300 and it looks nice and I like own. I would get it in silver. It is available in silver. Like they sent me the black one, but silver, you can still get the, uh, the beautiful silver one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Case design to our point of the case design, same exact case. I haven't changed the case, thankfully. So it's got this nice thick finger groove on the side. It's got that gentle slope on the top, the knob has, look, look at this notch that you can't possibly fucking mistake it. Even on the black one, it throws a nice shadow. So you could see where the volume is. You know, visual visual acuity is nice. I like to be able to see something and say, that's where it is. I had to actually color in that one because it was too hard to read. This one's digital, doesn't count. That one's got a dingle, a dingle dot. Anyway, do I approve of the X8 Magic DAC? Yes. Is it as big a deal as what it was before? Kinda? Kinda. It, it, it's definitely one of those ones that's like, if you tell me you have an Une, Une or On, it's either Own or On. Take your pick. I'll say how I feel like it. If you have one of these in your setup, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to say, oh, you need to upgrade your DAC. I might ask you which op amp you're rolling in it. And then you could be like, mm, this one. And then I'll be like, ooh. So uh, links to this on Linsol. Links to Anime Waifu stickers. See us because every piece of equipment needs it. I don't know why I put them in the center of these. I felt like it needed it. I felt like there's a, there's a, there's a linearity to these that needed that needed it. Um, links to these, Patreon, Subscribestar, support this channel. And if you want to buy things that I'm done, like here's the thing, do I keep both? <laughs> I don't, once I have this one, I don't need this one because I'd rather have the one with the balanced output. The balanced output's big. The balanced output is big. That that and that is, I need it. If I, I didn't pull this out so many times because I'm like, I need a DAC, but I don't want a DAC with balanced output. And this one doesn't have that. So I might, this might end up in the yard sale as much as it's been my fucking, one of my favorite things. It's so pretty, I wish that was silver. But um, that might end up in the yard sale. Five dollars a month that you participate in yard sales. See these reviews early. So if this isn't on sale for $2.99 or whatever it is at, at Linsol, you will missed out and you should get it there. Um, listen to sound demos losslessly, possibly the only place you can listen to sound demos. We'll see. Um, $10 a month gets you in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where they know everything I'm doing as it's happening. You could also ask me questions directly. And once you're in that chat, you also get entered into a lifetime swap meet channel where you can buy, sell, and trade gear with other members who have ever been in that chat. So that's a nice little community uh, perk. Don't forget to check out Hi-Fi Guides, Hi-Fi Guides forums. I think some of them are still making forum posts for everything I review, because I only do one every two days, so it'll be like 15 a month or 14 a month because it's yard sales. Wallpaper. Don't ask me why I picked it. I'd pick the wallpaper based on the feel of the unit. If I feel something, I pick the wallpaper, it makes me feel it. It's a cool undressing unit. Um, link to that in the wallpaper hoard, or if you can copy paste the code to Imager, uh, I'm done. You're done. Thank you. Do all that YouTube shit that other people say. I won't say it. I won't say it. And also, don't forget to check out the merch store at zboombox.com, which is very boring because there's only one shirt and one color. But we got to sell all those out, and then I could actually do interesting things. So 
We good? Good.